guys. Welcome back to the channel. So to my understanding, a lot of you ask questions about the Randall cycle. What is it? How does it work? Why is it relevant? I'm going to try and explain why in this video as clearly and also as detailed as possible. So I can appreciate that many people watching this are not experts in the field of nutrition or biochemistry. So what it is, is that I understand that some of the words I use might not be well understood, but please understand that when we're talking about these systems, there just aren't other words for it. Um, you have to name things specifically and appropriately. And that's how I'm gonna describe it, but I'll try to break it down as clearly as possible. So the Randall cycle, or also known as the fatty acid cycle, is a process the body undertakes. And it was identified in 1963 by Philip Randall. It has been ignored in general by the scientific community and it's, it's they essentially took a dump on it um, because the ideology at the time was different to what this biochemical cycle was purporting. So at that time, it is recommended that we consume a low fat diet, focusing on carbohydrates as our primary fuel source. So as time has come out, now we know that three heaps and bounds of independent scientific literature, that the higher fat approach, or also the ketogenic approach is much more appropriate for human beings. It's indicated as more healthful. So many people online have misinterpreted this process and have dissuaded others from achieving maximal health and longevity. Paul Saladino is one individual that comes to mind. Anyway, I don't want to call people out and make vicious attacks on people's beliefs, but I want to explain why he has got it wrong in this video. So essentially it is a cross inhibition mechanism, which the body has been adapted to over a few million years to deal with the stress placed on the circulatory system. It's protective in a way that it reduces the amount of distress caused to the body through the intake of large volumes of sugar that is ingested. This is one reason why consuming fruit and honey on a carnivore diet is not indicated nor deemed appropriate for the human species. In every sense, we adapted to create the Randall cycle mechanism to protect us from exactly that, an excess of available sugar from our environment. So it's a sliding scale which is neither turned on or off, but is always active to some degree. Whether this happens to either a lesser or greater extent, in essence, it is either fully activated or less activated. It deals with what is happening outside of the cell wall and what it is trying to get into the cell. By default, it deals with what is inside the cell cytosol as needed by the body. And the cytosol is just the fluid that makes up the inside of the cell, essentially. It, it is a reactive mechanism that in a way moves things into place to be used or not to be used as an energy substrate for the body. Um, so a mixed macronutrient diet in the example of the standard American diet contains high amounts of both fat and carbohydrates at a given time. Think donuts, Krispy Kremes, you know, French fries, anything like that. Chocolate as well, it's probably the most obvious example. Um, this, this will increase the sliding scale I mentioned earlier towards a higher level of Randall cycle activation. Now, our bodies do have some requirement for glucose within our body. And there's a problem that people come across when they think of this. Um, they believe that the only way to acquire glucose for appropriate physiological functioning is through the ingestion of carbohydrates from the diet. We know that this is not the case. I'm reiterating a point I made in a previous video, but the essential thing is this. We can create all the essential glucose required by the body at a sustainable and functional level through the process of gluconeogenesis. 
This is through the breakdown of non-carbohydrate substrates such as lactate, amino acids, and glycerol. These are then turned into glucose within the body an appropriate amount to maintain homeostatic functioning. Gluconeogenesis is a demand-driven process. If you are to supply an appropriate amount of protein for your diet, your body will convert the protein to a degree into glucose as per what's required. Basically, if we consume enough protein for our diet, we can create all the glucose that we require. The problem that arises here is that in response to this video, I might be asked, how much protein should I ingest before I can activate the Randall cycle? The answer in short is this. It is always active to some degree and the level of which that happens, I'm unable to answer. This is due to a very wide variety of factors. The problem people in the keto or carnivore community is that they believe they are oxidizing either just fatty acids or just glucose by the body. This is an incorrect statement. We are nearly always using both by the human body, except perhaps for the brain. We want to minimize the chances of high level Randall cycle activation to reduce level of inflammation and other net negative factors from occurring in the body. Inflammation that is acquired from this is not indicated in scientific literature as beneficial. And it is not a normal physiological necessity. It contributes to the development of type 2 diabetes and produces a low grade of inflammation, which contributes to the development of atherosclerotic vascular diseases and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So consuming fat and carbohydrates at a given time, it will add up over time. The body will become, in essence, less healthy. Some people can almost get away with this, for example, very fit and active individuals. However, over time, it will become an issue and it will catch up with them. The key takeaway here I want to make is this. If you want to reduce the level of Randall cycle activation created from the body, reduce or even better, eliminate carbohydrate ingestion and focus solely on protein and fat as the bulk of your energy intake. I don't want to be considered dogmatic and say that we should all only be eating a diet of protein and fat. Although I will say this, if you want to optimize your achievable health outcomes, and consume exactly and only animal protein and fat. I just want to take the time to thank Bart Kay and Harry Sapans for creating videos about this topic and outlining key features of the brand brand cycle. The links to their channels will be put in the show notes below. I hope this video was as clear as possible and I tried to break it down as finely and easily accessible as possible. If you have any questions, just put in the comment box below and I'll try and get back to you. Cheers.